Thank you, God, for the testimonies tonight. Thank you, God, for, for the loss that you're saving, God. Thank you, Lord, I pray, the work that you're doing in our, our hearts and lives, God, the sanctifying work, and you're teaching us and showing us, leading us and guiding us, God. Thank you, Father. Pray your blessing. Help us to teach thy word tonight. Open our ears to hear, to receive of you and the truths, God. Let it be revelation, I pray. And I thank you, Father, and I ask all tonight in Jesus' name, and everybody said amen, amen. and amen. Praise God. All right, question number one. What are the three points uh, that are revealed with Naaman and his leprosy? Remember that? What are the three points revealed with Naaman and his leprosy? Very good. All right, that's right. The condition of man without God, the grace and mercy of God, the condition of man with God. Very good. All right. Naaman was a weak man with very few accomplishments. False. Naaman was a victorious man. True. Naaman was the commander of the Israelite army. You caught me on that one. I was going to try to trick you with that one. You're very good. Naaman was highly respected by the king of Syria. True. Naaman had great success. True. Uh, what disease did Naaman have? Leprosy is correct. Leprosy was curable. False. Leprosy still exists today. True. In the Old Testament, leprosy was a type of what? Sin. Correct. Leprosy was a slow death as it ate away parts of the body. True. If one had leprosy, they would have to cry out, go away, go away. Unclean. Unclean. Very good. What kind of clothes would a leper have to wear? What kind? Yeah, but they were called, they were called something. They were called mourning clothes. Mourning clothes. Not mourning like in the morning. Mourning clothes, okay? Lepers were only allowed to touch family members. False. False. They weren't allowed to touch anybody. Lepers were allowed to congregate with people. False, false. If we have good morals, God will accept us into heaven. Are you sure? All right. Our righteousness is as what? Okay. Cain thought his goodness was good enough for God. True or false? True. Cain's problem was Cain. True. Before a sinner can be saved, they have to see their need for salvation. Very true. Okay. Let's look in 2 Kings chapter 5 and look at verse 10. Verse 10, chapter 5, 2 Kings. And Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored to you, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became furious and went away and said, Indeed, I said to myself, He will surely come out to me, stand and call in the name of the Lord his God, wave his hand over the place, and heal the leprosy. Are not the Abana and the Farpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in rage. All right. He wasn't too happy, was he? All right. So, um, again, talking about uh, Naaman, his leprosy. Most would think that Naaman's greatness and honor and valor would bring salvation, but we know that it does not. Regardless of a man's achievements or his wealth or his power or his position, whether how much money or lack of thereof, what, uh, without God, he's a loathsome sinner on his way to eternal darkness, uh, a lost and dying hell. This was Naaman's condition. It's a condition of the world without God. Before the patient can be cured, they have to uh, recognize and accept their diagnosis. Uh, before a sinner can be saved, they have to recognize their need for salvation, right? Right? Just like you did, just like I did as well. I had to recognize my need that I'm lost. Now listen, when I got saved, I didn't get saved. I didn't say, well, I, I want Jesus because it'll make my life better. I want Jesus because he'll help me financially. I want Jesus to help me with this and help me with that. It wasn't like that. When I got saved, I recognized this one thing. I am a sinner. I am undone. I am lost. And if I don't get saved, I know I'll go straight to hell. That's, I was under conviction. I wasn't going to, I'm not going to accept Jesus just to make something better in my life I was lost and undone and until you come to that place you cannot and will not be saved a lot of people say well I'll come to Jesus so he'll help my marriage he'll help my job he'll help my finances you are not saved because a person has to recognize they are a lost sinner undone and going to a lost and not dying hell unless they accept Christ as their savior okay all right every one of you that are saved had to admit that you're a sinner first you saw your sin you admitted your need for salvation you 
cried out to God in repentance and accepted Jesus as your Savior. Now you're saved. You're clean. No longer are you a spiritual leper, but now washed up by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Now, the angel proclaimed, for there's born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Luke 2 and 11. God sent the Savior because the world needed a saving. He didn't send an architect. He didn't send an engineer. He didn't send a mechanic. He didn't send a plumber. He didn't send an electrician. He sent a Savior because every one of us needs saving from our sins. Amen. Nobody could help Naaman. Nobody. No one. Nobody had an answer to his problem. Not even the king of Israel could help him. Although he should have known about the prophet Elisha. The king of Israel. The king of Israel. God's chosen people. God's people should have known about Elisha, the prophet of God. He should have, but he didn't have enough spiritual sense in him to know anything. And that even happens in the church. People in the church don't have enough spiritual sense to know anything about God. They hear it day in and day out, but it doesn't change them. Forever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Amen. Help me out here tonight, church. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes the church is like a child. And sometimes that child can make you happy and you're very blessed by that child. And sometimes that child can make you very upset and you're very disappointed with that child. Amen. And uh, there are some folks I'm disappointed with tonight. I'm just going to tell you, I'm, I'm disappointed with some folks tonight. But, uh, you know, I just have to lay it in God's hands and say, God, you're going to have to deal with them because I can try to teach and preach until I'm blue in the face and they're not going to listen to me. If they haven't listened by now, they're never going to listen, okay? So you have to put it in the hands of God and say, God, you have to convict and you have to draw that heart unto you, amen? Uh, Lord, teach them, show them, guide them, help them, Lord. But I'm just going to say this. If you've been in this church for three to five years and you haven't grown, you haven't learned by now, you're never going to learn and you're never going to grow. Amen. You can learn, you can grow, but it all has to do with the condition of the heart. Are you hungry for God? Do you want to change? Do you want to learn? Do you want the Lord to work in your life? Oh, I can tell you the king of Israel should have known, but he did not, although he had every opportunity to know. The doctors couldn't help Naaman. They had no cure, no drug. They had no remedy. The king of Syria couldn't help him. The power, powerful armies could not even help him. The organized religious institution couldn't help him. Nobody around had the answer except listen to this except this little servant girl that's right the Bible said the servant girl uh, she was a slave and she served Naaman's wife she was a kid she was a nobody just an Israelite girl the Syrians picked up on one of their raids and yet listen to this she knew the answer not the king of Israel Come on, church. But this little girl, amen, she didn't have 14 doctorate degrees. She didn't have a Bible college education. She wasn't an ordained minister. She didn't go to seminary. And yet she had the answer to a man that was dying. She had the answer to this terrible dilemma. And she overheard what was going on. And then it's as if she nonchalantly just said, well, if only my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria... For he would heal him of his leprosy. We see that in chapter 5 and verse 3. It's as if she's mending clothes. It's as if she's just doing laundry and she overhears what they're saying. And, and she just says what's on her mind. Just only if they would just go to, my, amen, <laughs> to the prophet in, in Israel, he'd be healed. I know that. No problem. I mean, you know what I'm talking about? Just going about her daily activity. The answer was right there under Naaman's nose the whole time. This little girl has got what you need. Glory to God. This little girl, it's like no big deal. My God can heal him. We have a prophet in Israel who knows what to do for you. The faith of a child is incredible. The faith of a child is incredible. I mean, they, we make things so hard and we make things so difficult, but Jesus wants us to simply believe like this child here. The purity of a child's faith is precious. Amen. I mean, like this child or like this little girl. I mean, we too have the answer to the world's problem. We have it right here. Sister Laura Lee was talking about how she, God has opened up opportunities for her to minister and to be able to share the gospel of Christ. That's because we have the only answer to the sin problem. We have the only answer to the dilemma of the problem of this world. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. We've been saved and redeemed and delivered. 
You're the light of the world. You're the salt of the earth. The devil may tell you that you don't make any difference or you can't help anybody, but the devil's a liar. He's the father of lies. There's no truth to be found in him. Believe me, when people see you, they know there's something different about you. They know that. They know that. They might not be able to put their finger on it, but they know that you're not like the rest of the world. You are his witnesses, and may the glory of God shine through you and upon you. The Bible said we've been given the ministry of reconciliation according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through 21. He has saved us. He has reconciled us unto God through the Lord Jesus Christ. And now God has given the church, God's given us the ministry of reconciliation where we can lead others to Christ, where we can pray for others. Amen. What a wonderful ministry. If you're looking for a ministry, God's given one to you. Not a position, a ministry. People want positions. No, 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 no. A ministry. The ministry of reconciliation. What am I saying? You want something to do? Hit the streets. Hit the streets. Hit the streets. Hit the streets, hit the streets, get out there and begin to tell them about Jesus. Get on the street corner with the Holy Word of God and begin to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Begin to share your faith and your testimony of the great things God's done in your life. How he saved you, how he washed you, how he gave you a new life. You got a message, you got something to say. That is if you are born again. Amen. Amen. Help me out church. Hallelujah. Like Brother Jim did today, leading his daughter to Christ. Praise God. Ministry of Reconciliation. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I don't know if it's just the other day or what, but you never know who's listening. Mm. Yes. Amen. Oh, wow. Amen. 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 Oh. I l- <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. I like that. So, so just talking about the Lord and someone comes along and says, amen. They heard. They overheard what they, they were saying and coming just an agreement. Amen. 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 Don't be ashamed of God. Don't be ashamed of Jesus. Don't be ashamed of the cross. Don't be ashamed of what he did for you. Don't be ashamed to share. Don't be ashamed to testify. Don't be ashamed. Praise God. If we will confess Jesus before men, he will confess us before the Father. But if we are ashamed of him, if we will not confess him before this lost and dying world, he will not confess you before the Father. Amen. Bible very clearly tells us. I love I love how the Bible does this. I love how the Holy Spirit brings us out as if this girl just nonchalantly just speaks out only if he could see the prophet in Israel. Hallelujah. I know somebody that knows what to do for you. I know somebody that can help you. I know somebody that can heal you. I know somebody that can save you. I know somebody that can transform your life. And I get excited about that. I do. Hallelujah. Praise God. Can you imagine what Naaman must have felt like when he heard the news? All of a sudden, darkness turned to light. Doom has turned to hope. Death has turned to life. For the first time, there might be a chance. For the first time in his life, since the disease struck him, he has a chance to live again. Wow. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I mean, think about this. If you're stric- uh, stricken with a, a, a deadly disease and, and you know that's a slow death, but all of a sudden there's no cure. There's nobody that can do anything for you. And all of a sudden there's a glimmer of hope, a glimmer of light uh, uh, that says, uh, I know somebody that can help you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But you know, you know how exciting that is? Hallelujah. How exciting that is? Naaman probably thought, pack up your bags, honey. We're going to go see the king of Israel. Glory to God. God can use whoever he so desires. God use this little girl. He used that which most people would not even listen to. Most people would not even consider. I want you to look at this. Excuse me. Oh. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. I'm alive now. They wouldn't even think about it. Now, look at this. The Bible says this in 1 Corinthians 1, 26 through 29. For you see your calling. All right. Now, look at that. It says your calling. For you see your calling. Now, we're talking to the church. For we see your calling, brethren, talking to the church, okay, that not many wise according to what? The flesh. This is who God uses. This is who God calls. Not many wise according to the flesh. Not many mighty. 
Not many noble are called. Not many wise. Not many mighty. Not many noble. But God has chosen the foolish. Help me out here. See right there in the red? Foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. The foolish things. Hallelujah. Praise God. If God's going to use the foolish things, then God can use me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Think about this. He says, but God chooses the foolish things of the world to put the shame of the wise. That, that God has chosen what? The weak things of the world to put the shame of the things which are mighty. So God is using uh, the foolish. God is using uh, and pulling out and picking and choosing the weak things of the world. Then it says, and the base things of the world and the things which are despised, despised, God has chosen. What's God chosen? Not many wise, not many noble, foolish things, weak things, base things, despised things. Hallelujah. Praise God. Anybody a candidate in this house? Anybody a candidate? Glory to God. I'm first in line. Praise the Lord. Think about it. We think, oh, God can't use me. Yes, he can. Well, I'm a nothing. You're perfect. I'm a nobody. You're perfect. I'm weak. You're perfect. I'm base. You're perfect. I'm not very smart. You're perfect. Glory to God. That his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. That's who God chooses. He says, and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are. That no flesh should glory in his presence. That God can use you. God can use people like us. That you know that God will receive the glory. You'll know it's all God. It's not me but the Lord. It's not my smarts. It's not my wisdom. It's not my talent. It's not me but it's the Lord. Praise God. You know God had a plan the whole time. I love this. Let's, 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 let's uh, weave our way through the verses of this passage in chapter 5 of 2 Kings. Uh, this little girl, sir, this little servant girl was at the right place at the right time. Would you say yes? <laughs> Even though, listen, they had taken her as, and they had kidnapped her and used her as a servant or a slave. She was an Israelite. But how many know that God has a way of turning things around? <laughs> Hallelujah. No, no, not by chance, but by divine order of God. God. Although captive, yet God used her. God can use you even while you're in some of your most difficult, difficult situations. God used Joseph when they falsely accused him. Remember that? His brothers betrayed him, sold to the Midianites, sold to Potiphar, falsely accused by his wife, put in prison. But yet the Bible says God was with Joseph the whole time. And yet God was working in Joseph and through Joseph, preparing him to be second command of the most powerful nation on the face of the earth to save the nation of Israel from famine and starvation. Hallelujah. Joseph, God used. God used Paul and Silas when they're beaten, falsely judged, and put in prison. What the devil may use for your destruction, God can turn it around and use it for your good and his glory. Praise God. God can use a whale to chase Jonah. He can use a donkey to speak to Balaam. Romans 8 and 28. What does it say? And we know. Can you say we know? We know all things, everything. I don't know how this is going to work. It doesn't make sense. I don't know how it's going to work. But I just know I will trust God. Somehow God takes a little of this, a little of this, a little of this trial, a little of this difficulty, a little bit of this hardship, a little bit of this. And he puts it all in the bowl, mixes it all up, puts it in a pan, puts it in the oven, pulls it out. And it comes out as a tasty cake. Glory to God. God can do that with our doesn't make sense now i don't know but i know he knows all things work together for good hallelujah hallelujah he's working <laughs> god is working now are we good are we all right everybody okay all right i love this okay and uh, you know if i if i if i'm if i'm baking a cake and uh, some of you some of you folks know how to bake cake from scratch not me. I can't do that. But anyway, some of you make a, bake a cake from scratch. And you take the flour. You, take the, you just, just sift the flour, right? But if you take the flour by itself and you stuff it in your mouth, does it taste good? No, we're going, blah, blah, blah. that's a blah, blah, nasty taste of cake, right? Well, a cake has, what else does it have? Egg? Does it have egg? 
Well, what do you take the egg, crack the egg, and pop it in your mouth? Does that taste good? No, that tastes awful. So the flour and the egg by themselves taste bad. What else do you put in there? Bacon soda? You put bacon soda? Bacon soda, bacon powder, bacon soda. Pop that in your mouth. Does that taste good? No, no. What else do you put in cake? What else? Sh sugar. Well, sugar is good. Uh, that's the good part, okay? That's good, though. That's good because there is that. So sugar does taste good. What else? Salt? Huh? Oil. Oh, yeah. Take a quarter cup of oil, swing it around, put it in there, right? It doesn't taste good like that by itself. But when you bring it all together, throw it in a bowl, mix it up, put frosting on it after you bake it, you have a cake that tastes delicious, amen? Especially a Texas cake with yellow cake with chocolate frosting and vanilla ice cream. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's what I'm talking about. But the ingredients by themselves don't taste good. Sometimes circumstances of life don't taste good. This is hard. This is hard. This is hard. God puts it all together, mixes it up, pops it in the oven, brings it out, slaps some frosting on there, and it's good to swallow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what God does. All things work together for good. To those what? Who love God. To love God. Those who love God. Those who are the called according to what? His purpose. You're saved and you love the Lord. God has called you for His purpose. His purpose. His purpose. His purpose, not our purpose, but His purpose. That's important to remember. It's His will be done, not our will. Not our will. Okay? We, we, <laughs> it's His will. Let his will be done in heaven as it is on earth. Amen. Naaman told the king of Syria what the little girl told him. So the king of Syria wrote a letter to the king of Israel about the situation. And the king of Israel didn't know what to do. And so he thought the king of Syria was trying to start a fight with him and pick a fight with him and therefore start a war. Okay. And so uh, the king of, of Israel tears his clothes in distraught because he's upset. And the king of Israel was like, am I a God to kill and make alive or to heal somebody? Who am I? I don't have the power to heal. I don't have the power to, to, to bring a raise from the dead. Now, it's sad that the king of Israel didn't know or have enough spiritual sense in him to think of the prophet Elisha. And all the, the miracles that Elisha had done by the power of God. Now, the king was totally disconnected from God. The king. Now, hold on with me. The king of Israel, God's chosen people, totally disconnected from God, okay? He had no heart for God, no desire for God. Big ego, yes, oh yeah. All about himself, you better believe it. But thinking about God, no. And here's the answer right under his nose, and he didn't know it. And how many Christians are running everywhere else looking for the answer when the answer is right here under your nose? Hallelujah. Get in the word of God. The Lord will speak to you. The Lord will tell you, praise God. It's right here. You know, hey, yet I find this, many people, they will not or don't accept it. We hear the word God preached. We know what's in the word. And yet we run to the world or someplace else for the answer. Come on, church. And the Bible says that those things are just broken cisterns that hold no water. No water. They can't help you. Only God can help you. Go to God. Cry out to God. Go to the Word. He'll give you a word. Amen. I'm teaching tonight. <laughs> Preaching and teaching. Yelling and telling. All right. All right. So Jesus, he's the answer. Okay. So he's the answer. He's not one of, he's not one of many answers. He is the Jackie, he's the answer, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. He's the cure. He's the antidote. He's the medicine. He's the great physician. He's everything that we need. But he's so much more than that. He's so much more than that. Naaman, Naaman would bring silver, gold, and clothing. But Naaman, listen, Naaman, Naaman, Naaman. You can't buy the gift of God. It's freely given. You can't buy God. You can't manipulate God. You can't purchase God. There's no amount of money that can merit this wonderful gift of salvation. No, no, no. There's nothing of ourselves that deserves any good thing from God. We don't deserve the least of his blessing. Amen. All right? Now, this is preaching. We don't deserve the least of his blessings. This is teaching. We don't deserve the least of his blessings. Okay? We got it now. Okay? You got it? All right? All right, here we go. Now, think about this. Think about this. 
Anything we receive from him is only because of his abundant mercy and grace. Only because of abundant mercy and grace. Only because. Don't, don't, don't get the big head. Okay? Think that you did something. No, no, no. Only because of his mercy and grace. It's not earned but freely given. Now listen. Listen to this. Let's go to Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55 verse 1. And it says, Ho, ho, everyone who thirst, come to the waters. And you who have no money. He says, who have no money. Your wallet is empty. Your checking account is empty. Your bank account is empty. Your 401k is empty. Okay? He says, he says, now this is interesting. Let's, let's look at this because we read this, but we don't study it. Who have no money, he says, come buy and eat. <laughs> Wait a minute. You just said, you just said, you have no money. Well, that, I qualify for that. I have no money. He says, yeah, you're the one I want. You come and you come by and you come and eat. You who are thirsty. All right? You have no money, but you come by and eat. Yes, he says, come. He says, buy wine and milk without money and without price. So we're talking about something more than just physical milk or wine or honey or whatever. We're talking about spiritual things. Verse 7, Isaiah 55. Let the wicked forsake his ways. Well, that's talking about you and I. Let the wicked, let the sinner forsake his ways. And the unrighteous man, his thoughts. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. You can't merit it. You can't work your way there. Let him return to the Lord, and he will what? Have mercy on him to our God. Listen to this. For he will abundantly pardon. God will abundantly. Now listen. It didn't just say he will pardon. It says abundantly pardon. God wants to forgive. God wants to save. God wants to deliver. God wants to cleanse. God wants to pardon. He's like the judge, right? And you're in prison, right? Right? It's like the judge. And you're going to go to prison. I mean, this is it. You're guilty. Guilty, guilty. You're guilty of your sins. You're guilty of your crimes. And the judge is just saying, would you just confess? Would you just come repentant before me? And I'll pardon you. It's like God is saying, I want to forgive you. I want to help you. I want to forgive you. I want to deliver you. Amen? Just confess it. Just come to God and say, yes, I am a sinner. Yes, I am undone. Yes, I'm not worthy of the least of your blessings, but I come only solely on the mercy and the grace of God. And God says, forgiven. Let him go free. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Naaman's problem wasn't leprosy. Naaman's problem was a sin problem. See, he needed cleansing. He needed forgiveness. He needed wa- he to be washed. The world's problem isn't politics. The world's problem is not guns and bombs. The world's problem isn't social or economic. The world's problem isn't Russia or China or Iran or North Korea. The world's problem is sin. That's right, sin. S-I-N. That's it. That's it. We all feel the effects of sin. The whole human race is infected with sin. Leprosy runs through our veins. It has destroyed the home. It's destroyed marriages, families. It, 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 it has destroyed teenagers and children. The whole world sits in the sludge, muck, poop, puke, and vomit of sin. And no amount of money can wash your sins away. Not gold, not diamonds, not silver, not rubies. No amount of money can cleanse the leper of his disease. None. None. Only the blood of Jesus Christ can wash the sin stains away. Only the blood of Jesus can make the sinner clean. Only the blood of Jesus can sober up the alcoholic. Only the blood of Jesus can make the prostitute pure. Only the blood of Jesus can clean up and deliver the drug addict. Only the blood and nothing else. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Aren't you thankful for the blood? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Very thankful for the blood. Now, now let me go, uh, let me go back to teaching, okay? When Elisha, when Elisha heard that the king of Israel tore his clothes, he told, he told them to send Naaman to him. He's like, oh, I heard the king tore, tore his clothes. What's this all about? So send Naaman to me, okay? So Naaman went with his horses and his chariots and, whoo, whoo, yeah, and Elisha's house, okay? He went there, all right? And, uh, and so when Naaman got there, Elisha didn't even come out to see him. Get this. He didn't even come out to greet him. He didn't say, oh, Naaman, it's so good to see you. and so good to have you here at Word of Life. <laughs> he didn't do that. He didn't do that. Notice this. Isn't that true? 
Now, sometimes, you know, if the pastor doesn't make a big to-do about somebody, they get mad. Same pride as in Naaman is the same pride as in them. Okay? And so, and so Naaman, he, he got there, at least Elisha didn't come out. He just sent a messenger telling Naaman to wash in the Jordan seven times and he would be healed. So, so the pastor, he just, says, he just sends a greeter to them and says, welcome, it's so good to have you back. It's been some time. Okay? Right? Okay? And so sometimes we got, oh, even the pastor didn't come. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I'm not able to, all right? It's not that I don't want to. Sometimes I'm just not able to, okay? Now, 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 listen, I want you to get this. Now, just like with people, this didn't set well with Naaman, okay? He, he, he got mad. In fact, I mean, he got super mad. The Bible says, but Naaman, look at verse 11. But Naaman became what? Furious. Furious, okay? The word furious in the Hebrew means wrath. Can you say wrath? Wrath, there it is right there, wrath. And it means to burst out in rage. It means provoke to wrath. It's like he's walking around and he's having a conniption fit. Like a baby, that's right. That's right. Yeah, Merritt, you tell him to come out right now. I came all this way. Yeah, I demand he comes out and talks to me and greets me and does it this way. Okay? Now, I know nobody, nobody does that these days. I know that, Okay? The idea is a volcano that erupts, okay? <laughs> right? Temper tantrum. He exploded. Just like people in the church. Just like people in the church do. And Naaman was mad that Elisha wouldn't even come out to see him. Don't you know who I am? I'm the commander of the Syrian army. Ooh. I'm prestigious. Nice to meet you. I'm honored by thousands and thousands, thousands. I have great accomplishments. I'm successful. I am rich. But that doesn't get anywhere with God. That, praise the Lord. There was something else that Naaman had, and which, which we won't mention here, but pride. P-R-I-D-E. Okay? He was a very prideful man. Very prideful. Now, the Bible says this. Let's talk about this. It said, God resists the proud, but gives grace to who? The humble. God resists the proud person. The proud person doesn't want God. The proud person doesn't cry out to God. The proud person doesn't see their need for God, okay? So God resists that person, okay? God is not going to help that person. God's not going to bless that person. That's that, no, because that person doesn't want God, okay? He came to his own. His own received him not. The religious Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes were very proud. They wanted nothing to do with Jesus, the Messiah. Here they had, here Jesus had ample proof that he is the Messiah, the Son of the living God, and they wanted nothing to do with him. Religious pride. We'll talk about that in a minute, okay? What about 1 Peter 5 and 5? I know people are not interested in learning the Bible. I realize that. But I'm thankful that you folks have come tonight to take the time, okay? Likewise, you younger people, the younger ones, submit yourselves to your elders. Oh, look at that. Right? What about having respect? What about respect back in the church? What about the fear of God back in the church? What about respect for your elders? You know what? You know what? I didn't start out this way, but now I am. I didn't start out as an elder, but I am now. <laughs> I am now, right? And I don't go around going, I demand respect. I don't, I don't demand respect. But I tell you what, it sure is nice when you see it. I tell you what, when you have the younger people, when they respect the elders... Praise God. I mean, it just yeah, it does something to you, doesn't it? You think, oh, praise the Lord. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another. Now he's talking to the church. Be submissive. Yield, subject yourself to each other. Come on. Hallelujah. Husbands to wives, wives to husbands, and members of the church. Right? Subject, humility, humble ourselves. But he says, he says uh, be clothed with humility. That's like putting on a jacket. Be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So Peter says it too. So James says it. Peter says it. I wonder where they learned it from. Where do you think they learned it from? Jesus. Right? Wasn't James the half-brother of Jesus? Yes. Peter walked with Jesus for three and a half years? Yes. Remember that? So I, I think they learned from Jesus, right? Therefore, now this is, this, is, this is Peter saying this now. Peter's a man's man, right? 
And he said, therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Now, I think there's something to this. Before you cast your cares upon the Lord to take care of your needs, you need to humble yourself to the Lord and to one another. You got to walk in humility. And I'm not talking about false humility. You know, I'm not talking about this. I'm not talking, well, I'm waiting for people to feel sorry for me. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about humbling yourself to God, uh, humbling yourself to the Lord, humbling yourself to one another, okay? I care about my brother, my sister, and their needs and their lives. Praise the Lord. I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to walk around like I'm the big shot and everybody owes me something. No, it's not like that. I have the love of God and the humility of the Lord as I humble myself to God. What's Proverbs 16 say? Verse 18. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. Better to be of what? A humble spirit with a lowly. It's better to be with, of a humble spirit and with those of humble, humility than to divide the spoil with the proud. Amen? It's just the opposite. The world's ways are just the opposite of God. They think riches, riches, riches. That's more important. No, God says humility and being with a lowly. That's more important. Okay? Look, look at, look at um, um, verse, uh, Proverbs 29, 23. A man's pride will bring him low. But the humble in spirit will retain honor in the eyes of God. Isn't that wonderful? A man's pride will bring him low. But the humble in spirit will retain honor. When Jesus said, look, if you're invited to a place, don't take the high seat. Don't take the first seat. He says, take the lowly seat. Just take the seat over there away from everybody in the corner. So that when the, when the, when the guest of honor, when the, guy, when the man comes and, he, and is giving a dinner party, he sees you over there, he calls you up to the seat of honor. But he couldn't do that if he took the high seat. He might say, that's not your place. Get out. And then you're embarrassed. Right? All right. Praise God. Proverbs 21, 24. A proud and haughty man. Scoffer is his name. Proud and haughty. He acts with arrogant pride. We don't want to be that way, do we, church? Not only is there pride, but there's religious pride. I think the religious pride is the worst kind of pride that there can have. <clears throat> Not only does it blind you from the truth, but it blinds you from God. Okay? It blinds you from God. Praise the Lord. All right. Let me, let me, let me since we're on this subject, okay, let's, let's, just, let's just finish this up here tonight. Look at Luke 18. Luke 18 in your Bible, verses 9 through 14. Luke 18, verses 9 through 14. Okay? Jesus first starts off this chapter with prayer, persistent prayer, okay? Then he, he moves on into verse 9, and uh, Jesus told a parable about the Pharisee and the tax collector. You know the story. And the Pharisee trusted in himself that he was righteous and despised others. True? Right? And Jesus said this. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. Now, the Pharisee, very religious person, tax collector. Nobody liked tax collectors. Okay, because just like today, they take your money, all right? Then he says, the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. And, okay, so he's not praying to God. He's not praying to be heard by the Lord. He's not, he's not bringing his supplication to God. He's praying to be heard by himself, okay? It's not, it's just religious performance is all it is. Thus with himself, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men. Okay, so what does he do here? A, a Pharisee that's full of himself, full of pride, religious pride. He compares himself with others. And he looks how good he is. And by comparing himself with other people, he elevates himself. And so in his own mind, he thinks he's good. How do you know if you have an element of a Pharisaical spirit in you? When you compare yourself with others and you put them down to only elevate you. When you begin to criticize, when you begin to put down, when you begin to talk about others, this is what he's doing. Notice this. He says this. I thank you, talking to God, that I am not like what? Other men. Well, what kind of other men are you talking about? Well, they're extortioners. I thank God I'm not like, thank God I'm not like you. I'm not like you. Thank God, the unjust. The unjust. Oh, I thank God I'm not like that drunk. I thank God I'm not like that drug addict. I thank God I'm not like that person. I thank God I don't drive a car like that. I thank God I don't live in a house like that. 
I know we don't have any pharisaical problems here. I realize that. Okay, but it's true, isn't it? He says this. He says, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. All right? I think I'm not like that. He says, now he says, now what does he do now? He looks at what he does and his achievements. He says, but God, he says, look. He said, I fast twice a week. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. Wow, that, that's going to get you close. <laughs> You're going to get the first seat in the house right there, buddy. I give tithe of all I possess. Look, everybody, I tithe. Uh, uh, uh. Okay? I, I, I'm bragging on what I do. Okay? He says, and he says, and the tax collector. Now he compares. Now he looks at the tax collector, the guy that nobody likes. And he's standing afar off, would not so much as even raise his eyes to heaven. No, what is he? What, what's wrong with the tax collector? He's broken, he's humble, he's repenting. Beats his breast or his chest, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, Jesus said, this man, talking about tax collector, went down to his house justified, saved, redeemed, forgiven, rather than what? The other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. And don't you know the Pharisees, they were having a fit and rage when they heard this. Are you saying, you're going like this, are you saying that this tax collector's better than us? You said it. But you know what? We have to be careful because this can creep in like a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Next thing you know, you thought everything was good. You thought, man, I'm, I'm, everything is great. I'm so spiritual. And then God shows you, wait a minute. Pride is creeping in. Okay? And, okay, right? There, there, you can have pride whether you're rich or poor or in between. There's a lot we could say about pride, but the, but the bottom line is this. Pride doesn't go anywhere with God. If, if we want God or God's help or God's blessings, we must come by the way of humility. We must humble ourselves before the Lord. The way up is the way down. 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 God is looking for those who are of a broken spirit, a contrite heart. The world is full of so much pride, it can choke a mule. Pride is a stench in God's nostrils. Pride is an abomination. And that's scripture. That's scripture. What are one of the things God hates? A proud look, right? That proud look is the extension of what's in the heart, the pride in the heart, okay? Um, it's impossible for one who is prideful to be saved. Jesus said, blessed are the what? Poor in spirit, for theirs is the what? Kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. So poor has nothing to do with their financial status. Poor has nothing to do with whether they have money in the bank or not. Check the account. Doesn't matter. 401k, doesn't matter. Jesus is talking about spiritually poor or spiritually bankrupt. In other words, you see your need for salvation. You come humble and broken before God. The poor in spirit recognize their spiritual poverty and casting aside all self-dependency, they seek God's grace. These are the ones that will be saved. In fact, you could not get saved unless you did that. These are the ones who will inherit eternal life and receive the kingdom of heaven. Amen. So it's the same for Naaman. And he had to learn a lesson quick if he wanted to receive anything from God. Elisha told Naaman to go wash in the Jordan River and dip seven times and you will be made clean. Yeah. And Naaman became furious and went away and said, indeed, he said, I said to myself, this is what Naaman said, I said to myself, he said this, I said to myself, he will surely come to me and stand and call in the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over this place and heal the leprosy. That's what he'll do. Oh, really? That's how he's going to do it? The preacher, you better do it this way or else. And so, and so Naaman, <laughs> Naaman wanted what most, most of the church wants, a show. The church wants a show these days. It wants a show. And it wants performance. And then, oh, so, oh, Naaman, you have so much to learn. And, and so you think that you know so much, and yet you know so little. Naaman had in his mind how he thought everything should be, okay? So he wanted to have a big ceremony of an event where Elisha would come to him and wave his hand over him and say some kind of magnificent prayer that would amaze the people. In the name of the God of Israel, heal this wonderful, magnificent, glorious, victorious, accomplished man. No 
No, no. Help me out, folks. This is what he wanted. Help me out. This is what he wanted, okay? He wanted something to amaze the people. Um, and listen, Naaman wanted to be healed Naaman's way. He wanted it done in such a way that made Naaman look good, not God, not to bring glory to God, but make me look good. Okay. He wanted it done in a way that elevated Naaman, but not God. Now, now, hold, now wait, hold on now. Wait, don't get mad at the messenger. Don't storm me yet. We have to be careful the motive of our ministry. Am I doing this to make me look good? So the pastor will pat me on the back and say, good job. I may do that. I may do that. But the motive of the heart, why am I doing this? Why am I a part of this? To make me look good or to elevate God or to glorify God or to lift up the name of the Lord? Which name are we trying to lift up? See, a lot of times we compete our name with God's name. Right? Right? There was a pastor, Brother Schutz. I'm, I'm assuming he's still alive, preaching in Florida, church in Florida. Started a church in Florida, Pentecostal preacher. And uh, I don't know if he's retired or not. But I heard him say this out of his own mouth. I was there at the minister's conference convention when he said it. Preached a powerful message. And God was using him. And people were getting saved. And the church was growing leaps and bounds. It was incredible. And then the Lord dealt with Mr. Schutz or Brother Schutz or Pastor Schutz and said, you know, uh, God, God, you know, he, God had done so much and this was happening, this was happening, this was happening. He says, but, he says, I have ought against you. I have ought against you. And Brother Schutz is like, what? He says, I'm here in your name more than mine. I am here in your name more than mine. And man, I tell you what, he had to, Humble himself and break before God in repentance. God will check the motive of our heart. It's almost as if Naaman was barking off the order, telling God what to do, telling God how he was going to heal him. But God doesn't submit to Naaman. Naaman must submit to God. Now, Lord, I'm, I'm not, we're going to, listen, we're, we're going to get him healed next time, okay? We're almost there. We're almost there. <laughs> we're almost there. We're gonna, we're gonna we're gonna get him healed. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're gonna we're we're almost there, folks. I mean, it's it's. But I we got to deal with this because God God is showing us so much. The Holy Spirit is showing us so much that we read over these things and we don't we don't catch this. We don't see this. We don't we don't catch this. But this is so powerful. The gospel right here in chapter 5 of 2 Kings. How to get saved. How to receive of God. How, how we are to live our lives. Come to God by faith. How we are to humble ourselves before the Lord. Amen. But a lot of times, you know, I mean, God, we don't even realize it. That there could be, pro excuse me, I don't know what's causing that. If it's one of you, please stop. Amen. I don't know. <laughs> are you throwing something at me and it's not, what, what's happening here, Okay. But, folks, listen, I mean, God, listen, if anything tonight, God, check the motive of my heart. Check the motive of my heart, oh, God. Oh, hallelujah. We, I want to come humbly before the Lord. I want to humble myself to God. Humble myself to Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. God is good to us, isn't he? Hallelujah. We're going to talk, we're going to talk more about... Um, the Jordan River. We're going to talk about some things, and 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 uh, we, Naaman is trying to rationalize and understand this in his head, his mind, and he's, he's getting frustrated. He's upset. He's aggravated, and he doesn't understand why it's not going his way. And so, he's going to learn real quick that if he wants anything from the Lord, it's got to be God's way. Okay, it's the same way for us. Praise the Lord. If we want anything of God, it's got to be God's way. And I'm telling you, but what a glorious way that is. I, I don't want it my way. I want it the Lord's way. Amen. And, and, but God has a way of, of showing us and dealing with our hearts and getting a hold of us and uh, showing us things in our hearts and lives that we didn't know that were there. I didn't know there was pride there. I didn't know there was self there. I didn't know there was ego there. I didn't know that. But God knew, didn't he? God knows how to get a hold of you. Just like, just think about this, how God is working with this man. That's not even an Israelite. He's, a, he's from Syria. And yet God is working with this man. Amen. And if God will work with this man, God will work with you and God will work with others. 
Don't give up on them. Just keep praying for them, okay? Praise God. Amen. Let's stand together. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. Praise God. We worship you in this house, almighty God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Almighty God. I sing praises to your name. O Lord, praises to your name. O Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name. O Lord, Praises to your name, O Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing glory to your name, O Lord, glory to your name, O Lord. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing glory to your name, O Lord, glory to your name. O Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. Oh, Lord, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We worship you, Lord. Almighty God, we magnify the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Would you be willing just to come up here to the front with me tonight and we'll pray together. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We praise your holy name, Jesus. We worship you, almighty God. We praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glorify the Lord. Glorify the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed Lord. Blessed Lord. Blessed Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Something of the Lord tonight. Just cry out to God. Lord, I love you. Lord, I praise you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we magnify you tonight. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for your goodness. Thank you, God, for your grace. Thank you that we can come to the living God. Thank you that you hear our cry. Thank you that you know our need. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. Father, we know we don't deserve any good thing from you, but thank God, Lord, for your mercy and your grace. Oh, that's bestowed upon us, Lord Jesus. I pray for my brothers and my sisters in the Lord. Almighty God, touch them, Lord. Help them, Lord. Draw them, Lord. Speak to their heart, God. Cleanse us of all sin. Wash us so of all pride, Lord God. Hallelujah. God, check the motive of our heart. I pray in the name of the Lord that our motives would be pure. Why The reason why we do what we do would be for the glory of God and the elevation of the name of the Lord Jesus and not for our own name, not the elevation of myself or my name, but of God. I pray in the name of the Lord. God, we give you glory tonight. We praise the Lord. We praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this time. We've come to praise you. We've come to worship you. We've come to glorify you. Oh, we've come to worship you. We've come to pray. We've come, God, to cry out to you. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Touch every heart, every soul, every life. Oh, God, I pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We love you. We praise you. We worship you, Lord. We magnify your holy name. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glorify his holy name. Praise God. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Draw me nearer to you, nearer to you. Fill my heart with your presence the way you want to. Till my 
my soul is a place each and every day draw me nearer nearer to you draw me nearer to you nearer to you fill my heart with your presence the way you want to till my soul is a blaze each and every day draw me nearer nearer to you hallelujah praise god thank you lord hallelujah jesus almighty god oh thank you lord thank you lord praise god praise god and because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives and because he lives hallelujah i can face praise god thank the lord hallelujah because he lives all fear is gone because i know he holds the future, and life is worth the living just because he lives. Praise God. Hallelujah. Any good church? Hallelujah. Praise God. Ah, amazing grace. How sweet the sound that had saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see when we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise. Then when we first begun, praise God, 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 praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that had saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Amen. Praise God. Lord is good. Amen. Next time we'll get we'll get Naaman dipped in that water. Okay. Seven times he's going to do it. He's, he's got to do it. God has a way. Listen, God has a way of dealing with us than he. Now, I couldn't force him.
but only God can do this, okay? But, and then we're going to deal a little bit with, uh, with Gehazi's greed. I'm already finished with that part of it and moving on to the next part about the floating uh, axe head. Uh, but nevertheless, we're getting there, church. We're learning, and I'm trying to pull out. And this is what we're trying to do. We are trying to help us to where the Scriptures come alive to you, that that chapter comes alive to you, that when we're finished with this, you're going to know it very well, okay? Amen. Praise God. It's in the Bible for a reason. God wants us to know it very well. Praise the Lord. Praise God. We have <coughs> service uh, this Sunday, Sunday school at 915. Everybody come. Come to Sunday school. Bring kids. Come. Bring them. Teenagers, bring them. And then uh, service at 1030. And then uh, fellowship Sunday night, okay? I really, really appreciate you folks. I really do. And I really appreciate uh, your love for God, and your hunger, and your desire for the Lord, okay? And your learning, and I, I love that, okay? Brother Tim, would you dismiss us tonight, brother? Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Yes. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, we had a little bit of liberty tonight since we didn't have the kids, but you're probably going to get home at the same time. It's all good. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, church. God bless you. Listen. Hug some necks tonight. Share fellowship, okay? Amen.